There was an evolution that allowed systems to make use of shared information. In effect, sharing the information being supplied by one sensor. Many of the additional vehicle systems, as well as those main systems that were needed to make the vehicle start and stop, were designed with the capability to communicate with each other. Although this was not a true network, it was the start of the evolution towards networked systems. A very simple example is when a vehicle's sound system automatically increases the volume as the vehicle speed increases. been around for a while, but it's an example of where a system, in this case the sound system, makes use of information from another system. The sound system receives a vehicle speed signal, which is initially provided by a wheel speed sensor used on the ABS system. The wheel speed signal is then passed to the sound system. If the wheel speed sensor produces an analog signal, it would be likely that the ABS ECU would then convert that speed signal to a digital signal for use within the ABS ECU, but that digital signal would also be passed to the sound system via conventional wiring. As well as supplying a wheel speed signal to the sound system, the ABS ECU could also be supplying a speed signal to the engine management system, the automatic gearbox system, the speedometer, the traction control system, and other systems. Therefore, there could be a number of signal wires passing from the ABS ECU to numerous other vehicle systems. Although our example shows a single wire passing between the ABS ECU and the sound system, you gotta remember that the ABS ECU might already have 20 wires or more connected to it. That one additional wire not only adds to the number of connections at the ECU and at the sound system, but that extra wire will add cost and weight. For every additional ECU that receives a speed signal from the ABS ECU, there would be at least one additional wire. This very basic form of network system reduced the need for duplication of sensors, and it did reduce the additional wiring that went with sensor duplication. So although there was additional wiring and cost, it would have been less than when there was also duplication of sensors. The obvious point, however, is that if there were many ECUs that required the same type of signal, it would not be viable to have numerous sensors doing the same job. Therefore, this simple form of networking was a move in the right direction. In our example of the wheel speed signal, We've only looked at one signal being passed to one or more vehicle systems. The next factor to consider is that there are many other signals that can be passed to, or shared by, many vehicle systems. Different vehicle systems can share signals from numerous sensors, but a system ECU can also pass calculated signals to other system ECUs. For example, the engine management ECU could provide a calculated engine load, or torque signal, which could then be passed to the auto gearbox and traction control, or vehicle stability ECU. With an increasing number of different systems being fitted to vehicles, it inevitably increases the amount of information that is shared between the different ECUs. This adds a considerable amount of wiring, usually copper, which further adds to the weight, the cost, and potential unreliability. Here's a simple example of the number of connections and how much wiring could be required to connect just six ECUs where information passes between them. Note that this example would not now be regarded as a modern type of sophisticated network, but it did allow a number of ECUs to communicate and share information on a network without the duplication of sensors and wiring. A signal from one sensor could pass to an ECU, but that ECU could then pass the signal to many other ECUs that require the same information. As an example, the ABS ECU is passing a vehicle speed signal to the safety system airbag ECU, but it is also passing a speed signal to the engine management ECU and other ECUs. Where more than one signal is passing from one ECU to another ECU, 
this will still require more connections. In our example, the engine management ECU is sending two different signals to the auto gearbox ECU. This could be engine speed signal and throttle position signal instead of having a separate throttle position sensor for the gearbox. There would therefore be two connections from the engine management ECU to the gearbox ECU. In addition, the gearbox ECU is sending two different signals to the engine management ECU, which also requires two connections. It is therefore quite possible that on this type of early network, for every signal that is being passed between different ECUs, there would be at least one wire for each transfer of a signal to another ECU. There is still therefore an obvious increase in overall cost, weight, and wiring complexity, which, of course, can lead to unreliability. Thanks for watching. This video was brought to you by BTU Service Solutions, a division of Bomb Tools Unlimited, and Euro Auto Training. We are focused on helping you and your auto repair business thrive. We're eager for your feedback, your comments, and your suggestions. Send us an email, comments at euroautotraining.com.